In this video, we're going to kind of talk about the kinetic versus thermodynamic product. We're also going to look at the, uh, the, the, the free body, the, well, the free body diagram, the, third, uh, the, the, the energy diagram, okay? And we need to know the label, which one is your kinetic and which is your thermodynamic product. So it so happens that the lower one, the higher activation energy will actually be your thermal uh, dynamic product. And the, the one with the, the lower activation energy, and, and it's usually at the top, this will be your kinetic product. Now, the reason why I'm creating this video is probably to help you with your lab, or even help you in class. I, I don't know, but um, this is more of an explanation video. Maybe it could help you figure out which one is your kinetic and thermodynamic product. Okay, so that's a general idea. So, you know, I have two reactions here. Uh, so maybe you're in the lab and you took cyclohexanone, okay? Maybe in the lab you took cyclohexanone and you react it with semi-carboxide. Now, semi-carboxide looks something like this. Okay, so this is semi-carboxide, okay? Now, we know nitrogen is chemistry. Okay, we know nitrogen is chemistry, and we know that if we put these two compounds in solution, okay, all I'm going to do is lose two hydrogens, which the, this nitrogen is actually more reactive, lose two hydrogens and replace the, the, the oxygen with the nitrogen. So, and so, in fact, in this case, I'll get a product that looks something like this. There's my nitrogen that I lost two hydrogens. I still have one nitrogen that has a hydrogen, and I still have this whole group here. So this is a product that I'll get. Now this is actually called a cyclohexanone, uh, cyclohexanone semi-carboxide. So this is a cyclohexanone semi-carboxide, carbazone. Okay, we form a carbazone now, okay? So what if you took this and run it in the lab, okay, you got this product, and what if you also took the same semi-carboxide with furofuro? So furofuro looks something like this. Say five membered ring, the oxygen is double bonded, okay? Has a ketone, has a carbonyl group, okay? It has a carbonyl group with 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 a hydrogen, so it has this aldehyde group here. So this is for, for all. okay. So what if you tip this and you added uh, semi carboxide also? And hopefully we should know that all we're going to do is replace again the oxygen. And so in fact, the product we'll get for this reaction looks something like this. There's a there, I'm sorry, there's a nitrogen, lost two hydrogens, and so we just draw the structure that remains. Okay, and so this is the structure that I'll get. So this is the product that I'll get. Now this is called two aldehyde semi-carbazone, but let's look at it as uh, a semi-carbo carb carbazone, okay? So my question is, which one would actually be the, the thermodynamic and kinetic product? Well, to figure this out, um, in the lab, you could figure this out by a quick, by just quickly looking at what you have, okay? So one way to tell a big difference between which one is which is the, the, the temperature at which they run, okay? And so here's what I need you to remember. At higher temperatures, uh, the thermodynamic uh, the uh, thermodynamic product is favored okay we need to know that at high temperatures the thermodynamic product is favored okay so if you're running this reaction in the lab and you see that at higher temperatures the thermodynamic uh, you're, you're using this under extreme heated conditions then you know you have something to do with thermodynamic product. And obviously at lower temperatures, the, the, the kinetic product is favored, okay? The 
kinetic product is favored. Okay, and in fact, I actually did this reaction in the lab, and we run uh, this reaction here for real for real with semi-carboxide for about 30 minutes under extreme heat. Versus cyclohexanone, we actually run these conditions, we actually did this uh, reaction under room temperature, okay? And it should make sense, right? Now, this only took 30 minutes, okay? So the kinetic, and, and, and in fact, we're gonna find out that this is a kinetic product just based off that 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 the idea that we run these reactions at different temperatures. So that's that's one that's the easiest way of figuring it out. Okay, so so this will be and, and we run this reaction for 15 minutes. So usually it's shorter. So I run this reaction actually for 15 minutes, and this we actually run for about 30 minutes. Okay, so time is also a telling factor. Okay, so the longer the time. So the longer the time uh, we're looking at, usually longer the time that's just usually associated with uh, associated with your uh, thermodynamic product, and the shorter time is usually focused on your kinetic product. And this should make sense, right? Because if I look at this, well. And this actually goes all the way down here. So this is my activation energy two. It's activation energy one. And there's my delta G. There's my free energy, okay? Well, if I look at this, well, notice that to get to the thermodynamic product, I have to get a, I have to climb a huge activation energy barrier versus the kinetic product. And so this is why the kinetic product is, is, is run at a less, it's run at lower temp, uh, high, you know, it's run at lower temperatures and the reaction is usually usually occurs faster than a thermodynamic product because the activation energy barrier is very small in comparison with the thermodynamic product. Thermodynamic product has to go through a huge activation barrier and it should make sense. That's why this reaction will actually take, take longer. And in fact, what we actually use and the reason why we use heat because we need to drive this reaction forward. Okay, so we use heat in order to drive this reaction forward. Okay, and remember, the thermodynamic product favors equilibrium. So at equilibrium, the thermodynamic product is, stable, is, is favored. Now, if we look at these two, we'll notice that I have a conjugated system here. And so, in fact, I could move some double bonds here to, to get some resonance structures. Okay, with here, uh, I, I, can't, I can't do anything. Okay, and so uh, another way of telling which one would be more stable at equilibrium would also be some sort of resonance idea. Of, of the double bonds okay and and so this is the and so, so this is off of this video it's more of to, to help you um, analyze and to help you figure out well which one would be your thermodynamic or kinetic product in any um, reaction you're running okay